And there are some antibody drug conjugates that are being developed in, um, in lymphoma, in, in the B-cell uh, lymphomas. Um, the, the polituzumab is one that's you know, in the forefront of that. Um, there was a, uh, which is, um, um, which is a CD20 antibody. There was also a, a CD22 antibody that was being yeah, developed. And frankly, there, you couldn't even tell that, that, I mean, I think the manufacturer was in, a, was in a pretty good position that they couldn't tell which one was going to be better because they were both um, really excellent. There are some associated toxicities with, with that. And um, love to hear your thoughts on this, uh, Andre. You know, with, when you're, with your repeatedly dosing patients, especially the low-grade lymphomas, with, with these uh, things that can cause neuropathies and so forth, um, you know, that, that, that's something to, be, to take into account when picking therapies. Absolutely. I mean, I think this is, you know, uh, we know from the data, Bratoximab, which is an anti-CD30 uh, with MMAE and that has neurotoxicity. The mechanism of neurotoxicity is not totally understood. It doesn't seem to be just leakage. But uh, clearly, some patients develop really severe neuropathy and durable neuropathy. So in patients, that's why in, in the context of our shop, you know, vancrystine can be dropped and all that to not uh, add on a neuropathy. And this is something, as you, as you alluded to, that when we pick the, the, the treatment, particularly sometimes for a commitment for a quite durable treatment, and that's tricky. So I think these antibodies, I see them more playing a role than just as a single agent for dur long duration in a combination setting, as we are starting to do in Hodgkin lymphoma, as we mentioned before, but also in um, CD30 positive T cell or large cell lymphoma. For example, for anti-CD30, there's other antibodies, there's numerous other antibodies including actually uh, you know, a big effort for years, for decades, of coupling them with a, as, a <clears throat> as a loading agent with a radioisotope. Right. And there was a lot of hope that a radioisotope would actually have a great activity because lymphomas are very radiation sensitive. And the activity has been somewhat disappointing. Yeah, I think that's, that, is a, that has been a disappointment involved very early in, in some of those projects, and we saw great responses, but not necessarily the most um, durable rem remissions. And there was also tremendous logistical issues and in terms of you know, delivering, uh, delivering the therapy that, that made a lot of that go out, go out of favor. Um, um, and and that's, uh, that, that's too bad. But the, uh, but the antibody drug conjugates, I think there's a lot working. The, the polituzumab I, I mentioned was a CD20. It's actually a CD79B target. But that's another antigen that, that's being targeted in, in, instead of CD20. <laughs> Um, there's also the, the um, you know, we talked earlier a little bit about the, the, um, the, the um, T cell re redirecting therapies that are being um, developed and the, the biphenotypics that are, that are being developed. So a lot of uh, excitement. Other ways to engage the, uh, the immune system other than the direct targeting of the tumor. Correct. And then uh, we always talk about lymphoma. But there's now really an opening of a new chapter in myeloma where the monoclonal antibodies, anti-CD38 particularly, seem to really have, and others, or the target seem to have really um, activity and then are starting to, there was some data presenting at ASCO, uh, combination with small, um, small molecule where this is gonna be something very helpful in a disease that is a perfect model for immunotherapy being an essentially a bone marrow disease. How do you, um, how do you pick which antibody to use? Do you, um, in which disease? I mean, um, is it solely based on everyone with a B cell malignancy gets uh, gets a CD20 antibody, but there's different CD20 antibodies out there. There's a benetuzumab, there's a putuzumab, there's So benetuzumab is not approved uh, out, you know, in a lot of indication, and then ofatumumab is approved in CLL who have failed um, alkylin indication and, and alantuzumab because at the time alantuzumab was used in the refractory CLL. And um, ofatumumab is supposedly having more CDC activity. The responses, and we know from the data from the Ibrutinib large randomized trial, the responses are really not that impressive of Ofatumumab. So it's not something that we use routinely. Obinutuzumab is also something that is, um, um, also has a lot of infusion reaction, and uh, much more than I would have expected, to be honest. And um, so, but it's manageable, and it, it has definitely more antibodies. So in someone who has outside of a protocol, in someone who has a CLL particularly that has, you know, extensive disease and has failed prior therapy, obinutuzumab is only something that we do. But as you heard, as you mentioned, once we see more of the data maturing in the, in the lymphoma area with obinutuzumab versus rituximab, maybe there will be a shift as well this way. One, one um, setting where, where 
we've utilized opatumumab therapy is in combination with rituximab as a bridge to allogeneic transplant for CLL patients with really refractory disease. So, so um, in that setting, it, it seems to at least hold patients or get them enough of a response to get the allograft in. And uh, patients with CLL can have uh, significant um, responses after the allergen egg transplant. Patients who actually have disease going in uh, can shrink down and, and go away in a year's time or, or some cases even longer. So, so um, monoclonal antibodies might be used as a bridge uh, to transplant in some cases. I think that the, 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 the natural areas for synergy would be to take two antibodies with obviously different uh, different targets, whether it's mm -hmm. CD79B different. or CD40 or CD22 and CD20. I think these are these are combinations so that would make sense. For data you were part of this, right? Study this data with the anti-CD79.